Have you ever heard of the Trajan Column before? It is one of the few monumental sculptures that have survived the fall of Rome, depicting the war victories of a Roman emperor, Trajan. Are you familiar with him? Aside from being considered one of the greatest emperors in Roman history, he is also known as a philanthropic ruler for his works, like the implementation of social welfare policies. Interesting, right? Hey guys, it's Nick. And I am Josh, and we're back for another episode of History Discovery on the Life of Trajan. In this video, we'll get to know why he is known as the philanthropist of the Roman Empire. Before we begin, why don't you comment down below what facts about Trajan have you heard of before? So first, let's get to know Trajan first. Trajan was a Roman emperor who lived from around September 15, 53 CE to August 8 or 9, 117 CE. He aimed to expand the Roman Empire to the east, focusing on regions like Dacia, Arabia, Armenia, and Mesopotamia. In addition, he carried out extensive construction projects and improved social welfare during his rule from 98 to 117 CE. In full name Marcus Ulpius Traianus, Trajan was born in the Roman province of Baetica, which is roughly equivalent to modern-day Andalusia in southern Spain. Although his ancestors were likely Roman or Italian, they may have intermarried with the local population. While his family was likely affluent and influential in Baetica, his father was the first to pursue a career in the imperial service. He served as a provincial governor and, between 67 and 68, commanded a legion in the conflict led by the future emperor Vespasian against the Jews. Vespasian, who had become emperor by 70, rewarded Trajan with a consulship, and a few years later he was granted patrician status, joining Rome's most aristocratic group within the senatorial class. Eventually Trajan became the governor of Syria, and later Asia. Though there is limited information about Trajan's early life, it is presumed that he grew up either in Rome or in various military camps alongside his father. He spent ten years as a legionary staff tribune, serving in Syria around 75 while his father was a governor. Trajan held traditional magistracies up to the praetorship, qualifying him to command a legion in Spain in 89. Ordered to take his troops to the Rhine River to suppress a revolt against Emperor Domitian by the governor of Upper Germany, Trajan likely arrived after the revolt had already been quelled by the governor of Lower Germany. Trajan enjoyed the favor of Domitian, who, in 91, granted him one of the two consulships, one of the most prestigious offices even under the imperial rule. Following the assassination of Domitian through a palace conspiracy on September 18, 96, the conspirators proposed the elderly and unassuming Nerva as emperor, a choice that the Senate embraced. This selection reflected a rejection of Domitian's autocratic rule and a return to the collaborative relationship between the emperor and the Senate seen during Vespasian's reign. Despite this, the imperial guard, known as the Praetorian Cohorts, compelled the new emperor to execute those who had secured the throne for him. Discontent also arose among the frontier commanders. In October 97, Nerva chose Trajan as his successor, having appointed him governor of Upper Germany. Trajan was deemed acceptable to both the army commanders and the Senate. On January 1st, 98, Trajan began his second consulship alongside Nerva. Shortly thereafter, on January 27th or 28, Nerva passed away, and Trajan was acknowledged as emperor by both the armies and the Senate. Before ascending to the throne, Trajan had married Pompeia Plotina, and he remained devoted to her. As the marriage was without children, he brought his cousin Hadrian into his household, and Hadrian became a favorite of Plotina. Despite maintaining a positive relationship with the Senate, Trajan was still seen as an absolute ruler, although not to the extent of Domitian or even Nerva. According to Cassius Dio, Trajan was most outstanding for his justice, bravery, and the simplicity of his habits. As an emperor committed to good governance and public welfare, he implemented a commendable domestic policy. This included support for the children of the poor, restoration of dilapidated roads, construction of new bridges, aqueducts, public baths, and a modern port at Ostia. Additionally, he continued the policy of his predecessor by undoing the negative effects of Domitian's rule, such as releasing prisoners and recalling exiles. Trajan does seem like a really good man. What are your first impressions of him so far? Tell us in the comments below. Now let's continue getting to know what his rule was like. Upon his return to Rome in 99, Trajan displayed respect and friendliness towards the Senate. 
He demonstrated generosity to the people of Rome by distributing substantial cash gifts and expanding the number of impoverished citizens receiving free grain from the state. In consideration of Italy and the provinces, he waived the customary gold contributions that cities typically sent to emperors upon their accession. Trajan also reduced taxes and likely played a role in introducing a noteworthy innovation, credited to Nerva, the establishment of public funds, known as Alimenta, to support underprivileged children in Italian cities. Previously, such endowments had been created by private individuals in Italy, including Trajan's close friend, the orator and statesman Pliny the Younger, who established them for his hometown, Comum, which is modern Como in northern Italy. Trajan initiated or supported extensive public projects in provinces, Italy, and Rome, including the construction of roads, bridges, aqueducts, land reclamation, harbors, and buildings. Impressive examples of these projects still exist in Spain, North Africa, the Balkans, and Italy. Trajan's contributions enriched Rome significantly. He implemented a new aqueduct to bring water from the north, erected a splendid public bathing complex on the Escaline Hill, and commissioned a magnificent forum designed by architect Apollodorus of Damascus. The forum featured a porticoed square with a colossal equestrian statue of the emperor at its center. On either side, the Capitoline and Quirinal hills were reshaped for two hemicycles housing streets of shops and warehouses, rising to several stories. Behind the new forum stood a public hall or basilica, followed by a court with libraries for Greek and Latin books and backed by a temple. In this court rose Trajan's Column, a still-standing work of art commemorating his Dacian Wars. The column's cubicle base, adorned with reliefs depicting captured arms, later served as the final resting place for Trajan's ashes. The column itself features a continuous spiral relief portraying scenes from the two Dacian campaigns, providing both a commentary on the campaigns and a catalog of Roman and Dacian arms, armor, military structures, and battle scenes. The original statue of Trajan atop the column was removed during the Middle Ages and replaced in 1588 with the current one of St. Peter. While historians acknowledge Trajan as a thoughtful emperor, his true passion lay in warfare, a field in which he excelled. Throughout his 19-year reign, Trajan engaged in three significant wars, initially with the Dacians in two campaigns and later on the eastern frontier. During Domitian's rule, Trajan briefly interacted with King Desbolus and the Dacians along the Danube River, but the outcomes were unclear and lacked success. In 101 CE, Trajan departed Rome to confront the Dacians, swiftly defeating them at Tape. Following another unsuccessful assault, the Dacians promptly sought peace. This time, however, Desbalus was compelled to relinquish substantial territory north of the Danube, although he was not known for respecting peace agreements. In 105 CE, Trajan returned to the north to confront the troublesome Dacians once again. Unfortunately for Desbolus, many of his allies abandoned him as Trajan and his Roman army approached. After the king's defeat, the Romans advanced to the Dacian capital of Sarmizeathusa, where they seized the entire treasury, sending it back to Rome. Fearing capture, Desbolus, perhaps wisely, chose to end his own life. The kingdom of Dacia was assimilated into the empire. However, to prevent further disruptions, Dacia's population was relocated, with over half a million people replaced by Roman colonists, transforming it into the Land of the Romans, or modern-day Romania. Upon Trajan's triumphant return to Rome, he celebrated by organizing a series of gladiatorial contests involving over 10,000 gladiators and resulting in the deaths of at least 11,000 animals. Over the following six years, the empire experienced a period of relative peace, but in 114 CE, war erupted on the eastern frontier, prompting Trajan to depart Rome for the final time, never to return. The conflict originated when the Parthians installed one of their own on the throne of Armenia, a Roman buffer state, disrupting the delicate power balance in the region. Trajan intervened, leading to the incorporation of Armenia as a Roman province. The Roman army continued its eastward expansion, annexing Mesopotamia, which included capturing the Parthian capital, Ctesiphon. Under Trajan's leadership, the Roman Empire reached its widest extent, stretching from Scotland to the Caspian Sea. In 117 CE, a rebellion erupted in Mesopotamia, compelling Trajan to retreat. During the conflict, Trajan narrowly escaped death when an arrow intended for him struck and killed one of his bodyguards. 
Simultaneously, rebellion broke out among the Jewish population in Cyrenaica, spreading to Egypt and Cyprus. When unrest escalated on the northern frontier, Trajan left his army in Syria and returned to Rome. On his journey, he fell ill, some suspecting poison, upon reaching Salinas in Cilicia. Trajan passed away on August 9, 117 CE. His body was brought back to Rome, where it was cremated and interred in an urn at the base of the monumental Trajan's column. Were you able to get to know Trajan well through this video? What impressed you the most about him? Tell us in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell. Thanks for watching.